We've made a lot of videos in the past about dangerous men, so let's flip the script and explore the other side of the coin, women who are just as bad, if not worse. These modern day female fugitives are the worst of the worst, but have evaded the grasp of law enforcement, leaving a trail of mysteries in their wake. From notorious masterminds to dangerous criminals, we delve into their dark pasts and audacious escapades. These are the 20 most wanted women in the world. Number 20. Christy Amberg Don't be fooled by her innocent baby face and her beautiful blonde hair. Amberg is a big-time criminal. In May of 2018, Amberg was sentenced to a year and nine months in prison for drug trafficking. She was part of a large network of dealers that purchased and sold a range of drugs like amphetamines, cocaine, and GHB over a three-month period from July to September of 2017. And it wasn't a small operation either, not by a long shot. During that period, the network bought and sold 10 to 15 grams of amphetamines every two days, 1 to 10 grams of cocaine, and 50 milliliters of GHB every week. However, Amberg was able to avoid serving her sentence when the court suspended it on the condition that she abide by certain restrictions, such as having a fixed address and asking permission from her probation officer before traveling, if it was a trip longer than 15 days. Oh, and if she promised to not keep committing crimes, of course. Unfortunately, Amberg violated these conditions and was declared a fugitive. Since then, her whereabouts have been unknown, and she's been on the run. To avoid a similar situation, Amberg's case is a stark reminder of the need for those involved in criminal activities to be aware of the consequences of their actions. Even when a sentence is suspended, the court can still take action if the offender fails to adhere to the conditions imposed. Now it's time for the odd topic. When we think of cartel bosses, we often think of men, but there's quite an infamous female cartel boss, and she is one of the most wanted women in the world. Her name is Katrina Maria Guadalupe, and she is profoundly dangerous. Known for posting videos of herself with her multitude of weapons, clearly bragging about her vicious life of crime, not only is she dangerous, but she simply does not care. The reason why she's our odd topic for the day, and not featured in the main list, is because, as of recently, she is no longer wanted. Because they got her. Mexican cops shot her dead. Her crimes were endless, leading a team of hitmen with the new generation of cartel. She has been responsible for the deaths of more than a dozen police officers. Though not a murderer herself, she is responsible for paying other cartel members to do so and coordinating a complex network of extortion, assassinations, and kidnappings. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. Number 19. Ruth Eisman Shear. Ruth Eisman Shear was born either in 1941 or 42 in the Republic of Honduras and was the first woman to appear on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted list. She was the daughter of Austrian Jewish refugees who migrated to Central America after escaping Nazi persecution. She graduated from the National Autonomous University of Mexico and then moved on to study at the Institute of Marine Sciences at the University of Miami where she met Gary Stephen Christ. Shear was on the list in 1968 for her part in the kidnapping for ransom of university student Barbara Jane Mackle in Georgia, a scheme hatched by her boyfriend, Christ. Christ was arrested two days later. They demanded half a million in ransom. Mackle was found 80 hours later, buried alive in a plywood box on a remote hillside in Georgia. Shearer managed to elude police and was arrested in Norman, Oklahoma on March 5th of 1969. 79 days after the kidnapping, Shearer was extradited from Oklahoma to Georgia to face trial in which she was found guilty and sentenced to seven years in prison. Shearer served four years of her prison sentence and was paroled in 1973 on the condition that she be deported to her native Honduras. Many books and films have been made about her story, one of which was written by the victim, Mackle, in collaboration with Jean Miller while Shear was in prison. The book is called 83 Hours Until Dawn, and it was later made into a movie. Number 18. Marie Dean Arrington Arrington is a notorious American criminal. 
So much so that in 1969, she became one of the first women to appear on the FBI 10 Most Wanted Fugitives. She was originally sentenced with the death penalty for the murder of a Florida legal secretary, who worked for a public defender who, so it happens, represented her two children on felony charges and did a rather bad job at it. In other words, it was a revenge killing in honor of her kids. She also murdered her own husband. While awaiting execution in 69, Arrington managed to escape from prison by cutting through a window screen and fleeing in her pajamas. That scene would have been pretty funny if it wasn't for the cruelty of her gnarly crimes. Eventually, she was caught, and in 72, she was sentenced to 10 additional years for escaping. Later, her capital punishment sentence was commuted to life in prison, where the Florida Supreme Court struck down the death penalty as unconstitutional. She remains in prison in Florida to this day. Number 17. Angela Yvonne Davis She's an American activist, professor of philosophy, and writer. A communist, pacifist, and feminist activist, she defends human rights, especially those of minorities, and she's one of the most recognized political activists of the 60s and 70s. How's that for a career? In 69, she gained national attention when she was removed from her teaching job at the University of California, LA, due to her membership in the Communist Party. This was a direct order from the then California governor, Ronald Reagan. Her dismissal from the university sparked a debate over the First Amendment rights of members of the Communist Party in the U.S. The controversy also raised questions about the power of elected officials to influence the hiring and firing of faculty members at public universities. The Davis was also prosecuted following the escape attempt of three prisoners, which ended in the death of a Californian judge after being taken hostage in August of 1970. The judge was killed by one of the guns she had bought two days earlier. Imprisoned for 22 months in New York and then California, she was finally acquitted and pursued an academic career that led her to the position of Director of the Department of Women's Studies at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Her areas of interest are feminist philosophy, including black feminism, African American studies, critical theory, Marxism, and the prison system. In 1998, she came out as a lesbian. She was twice in 1980 and 84 candidate for the vice presidency of the United States for the American Communist Party in tandem with Gus Hall. Number 16, Bernadine Dorn. She was an original co-founder and arguably the top leader of the anti-imperialist and anti-racist radical left violent extremist group called the Weather Underground. The group was active from the late 1960s through the mid-1970s. Dorn was the origin of several major bomb attacks, such as those targeting the Capitol, the Pentagon, and several New York police departments, which did not cause any victims. But the accidental explosion on March 6 of 1970 in Greenwich Village of a charge in preparation intended for a terrorist action against a military ball at Fort Dix caused the death of three militants. Former members of the group, law enforcement sources, and even historians of weathermen have accused her of both encouraging and participating in attempts to kill police and U.S. military personnel. However, no murders have been conclusively tied to her, and police officers were only injured in two of the bombings. However, due to highly unconstitutional investigation methods used by the Bureau, their ability to prosecute her was highly compromised. This led the U.S. Department of Justice to drop the most serious charges against her in 1973 and allowed nearly all the weatherman leaders to come out from hiding and not face any felony charges. Dorn was added to the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list at the time, surrendering to authorities a decade later in December of 1980. Number 15, Shantae L. Henderson. Shantae L. Henderson is an American convicted felon apprehended by the FBI on March 31st of 2007 after being placed on the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitive list. The judge gave her parole with a 10 year suspended sentence due to her being her own main witness in her trial and claiming self-defense. Five months later, Henderson was arrested with narcotics and an illegal firearm, leading to a 17 year sentence with a release date in 2027. Police suspected that Henderson was involved in 
at least five other murders and several other shootings, though no other charges were filed. The incident that led to her conviction was the shooting and killing of DeAndre Parker at a gas station in Kansas City, Missouri. Henderson claimed that he was trying to run her over and was acquitted of murder charges, but found guilty of the lesser charge of voluntary manslaughter and armed criminal action. The Kansas City Police Department claimed that Henderson was a leader of the violent 12 Street Gang though no evidence was presented to back up those claims. And Henderson denied any involvement with the gangs. Their alliance was titled 512, 5 Ace 2, or 5 Ace Deuce. Number 14, Hyatt Boumedi. She's one of 14 defendants tried for their involvement, directly or indirectly, in the bloody and horrific terrorist attacks of January 2015 in Paris. But Hayat Boumedine is absent from the hearing. She's vanished to Syria since then. Nevertheless, she was still on trial along 13 other defendants for her roles in the attack of January 7th, 8th, and 9th which had 17 victims and sowed fear in the country. She's one of the most wanted people in France. Hayat Boumedine is notably suspected of having participated in vehicle scams in order to finance the terrorist projects of Amadi Koulbeli, who she religiously married in 2008. But she left the territory before the terrorist attacks even started, at a time when she was not under any surveillance. In 2015, it was still too early to realize the involvement of women in jihadism. Moreover, at the time, Amadi Koulbeli was not not suspected of preparing an attack. On January 1st of 2015, she went alongside her husband to the Bul Mahasin brothers' home, Mohabed and Mehedi. One is now being prosecuted for complicity in the January 15 attacks and exfiltrated Hyatt to Syria. Both absent and presumed dead since 2016 by the intelligence services, they're the subject of an arrest warrant. Together, they took to the road at night to Spain and arrived in Madrid airport on January 2nd at 11.50 a.m. According to video surveillance, Hayat and Mehdi boarded a flight to Istanbul at 2.25 p.m. Number 13, Brenda Delgado. Mexican federal agents arrested Brenda Delgado, who was 33 years old at the time, in 2017. She was on the FBI's 10 most wanted list and accused of orchestrating the killing of a Dallas dentist. According to the FBI, Delgado was jealous of the dentist's relationship with her former boyfriend and hired someone to carry out a murder for hire. Delgado, a Mexican citizen and dental hygiene student, was arrested in Torreon, Coahuila, and transferred to a prison in Mexico City to await extradition to the U.S. The Mexican Attorney General's office confirmed the arrest, noting that the U.S. authorities had provided assistance in the investigation. The victim, Kendra Hatcher, was shot to death in the parking garage of her apartment complex in September of 2017. The FBI had offered a $100,000 reward for information leading to Delgado's capture. Apparently, Delgado completely lost her mind when she heard that her ex-boyfriend introduced Hatcher to his parents, which meant the relationship was getting serious and official. Evidently, she did not like this one bit and planned a cold-blooded murder that ended the life of a young and innocent woman. Number 12. Shanika Minor. She was once one of the FBI's most wanted fugitives, accused of the March 2016 shooting to death of Tameka Perry and her unborn child in Milwaukee. Minor was on the run for almost four months until her arrest on July 1st of 2016 in North Carolina, only three days after she was added to the FBI's top 10 most wanted fugitive list. According to Minor's mother, it all started with an argument between Minor and Perry over loud music that happened a week prior. Minor showed up at Perry's residence shortly before before 3 a.m. and the two started to argue. Minor told police her daughter thought that Perry was disrespecting her. Minor's mother attempted to separate the two. At one point during the argument, she even tried to push Minor outside, telling Minor that Perry was nine months pregnant. But it was too late. She was in a fitter age. Minor raised her hand and pointed a gun at Perry. Despite her mother's efforts, Minor allegedly fired a shot at Perry, striking her in the chest. Perry retreated into her residence and died in front of her two small children. Minor then fled the scene in a vehicle. Perry's unborn child was due on March 11th of 2016. Number 11. Ruja Ignatova. The Bulgarian criminal disappeared in 2017 after defrauding several thousand victims of nearly $4 billion. All had invested in her revolutionary digital currency, OneCoin. Then she vanished and got placed on the most wanted list of the US and the world. Having become the FBI's public enemy number one, she flew to Greece in 2017 before disappearing from the radar. Since then, the internal intelligence services have offered up to $100,000 to anyone who could locate her. 
Her crazy story is even in the process of being adapted to the big screen, as announced by the Hollywood studio MGM with actress Kate Winslet in the key role. It all started back in 2014. Holder of a doctorate in law from the University of Oxford and former advisor at McKinsey, Ruha Ignatova decided to go solo. At that time, Bitcoin had already conquered many hearts, seeing in this new digital currency a way to get rich quick. One coin was meant to be a direct competitor that would allow its followers to achieve 600% profitability in just a few months. If it sounds too good to be true, because it is. One coin only sold smoke. The FBI explains that her cryptocurrency was not listed on any exchange platform, not based on decentralized blockchain technology. Yet, between 2014 and 16, many people, seeing the value of their virtual wallet rapidly climb, tried to withdraw their money in vain. And with good reason, the money didn't appear on their personal space, but on the personal bank account of Ruha and her biggest dealers. Number 10. Jessica Edo Samwan. One of the 18 faces of Europol's most wanted criminals is Jessica Edosawan, a Nigerian woman implicated in a case of human trafficking and aggravated pimping. 26-year-old Edosawan is the only missing person in this huge case. Interpol is looking for her right now. In all, 26 people were arrested and indicted in the dismantling of a huge prostitution network. Controlled by a Nigerian pastor living in France who exploited around 60 women in total. They've since been taken in by associations. Edo Samwan was a mama of this network. She took care of the girls, but also had the mission of often traveling to Nigeria to find new young recruits, many of whom were underage. These were clandestinely sent to France via Libya. Arrive in France, they were assigned a debt of 50 to 60,000 euros and had to prostitute themselves in vans. To ensure their hold, pimps threatened the girls with horrific reprisals against their families back home. They were also subjected to a voodoo rite called the Juju, which is terrible for them, much more horrifying than the threats. That's how they kept the girls from running away. In Nigeria, people are terrified of voodoo, so they took advantage of that. Edo Samwan also dealt with the transfer and money laundering in Nigeria. Edo Samwan could have gone in hiding in Benelu, Italy, or Germany, where there's similar networks. It's part of what's so scary about religion and superstition. You never know who's gonna use them to control you. Number nine, Joanne Chesimar. Joanne Deborah Bryan, who became Joanne Chesimard after marriage, is better known by her African name. Asata Olubaga Shakur. Born on July 16th of 1947 in New York, she eventually became the godmother of rapper Tupac Shakur and was an active member of the Harlem section of the Black Panther Party, then of the Black Liberation Army. The BLA was rapidly shifting from the model of armed self-defense to the BPP to an armed struggle program. The change was ignited by the hecticome in the ranks of black radicals due to state repression and in particular to COINTELPRO an infiltration mission, repression, and targeted assassinations directed against black, Latino, and Native American radical movements. Oh, you didn't know the U.S. government was that scary? Formed in 1970, the BLA became truly active when the BPP split in 1971. It presented itself as an anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, anti-racist, and anti-sexist group, fighting for the institution of social relations in which black people would have total and absolute control over their own destiny as a people. Among other things, the BLA conducted a defensive and offensive campaign against police brutality and carried out targeted executions of police officers to protest against police crimes or deaths in custody. Shakur managed to escape from prison in 1979, and she's currently wanted by the FBI with a $1 million reward for her apprehension. Number 8. Mietta Terabellia. In June of 2021, the U.S. Attorney's Office charged Richard Ayazvan and Mieta Terelbian with running a conspiracy to fraudulently attain more than $20 million in COVID-19 relief funds. The couple used dozens of fake, stolen, or synthetic identities to submit fraudulent applications for 150 PPP and EIDL loans, as well as false and fictitious documents to lenders and the Small Business Administration. After being convicted by a federal jury and released Released on bond, they were believed to have fled the U.S., cutting off all their tracking bracelets. In their absence, the couple was sentenced to prison for 17 and 6 years respectively. 
U.S. authorities later determined that the couple had escaped to Montenegro. Meanwhile, the fraudulently obtained funds had been used for luxury purchases, including homes in Tarzana, Glendale, and Palm Desert, luxury watches, gold coins, jewelry, diamonds, imported furnishings, designer handbags and clothing, and even a Harley Davidson. The pair, who are also a married couple, were extradited from Montenegro and arrived in Los Angeles airport being under arrest. This case is a prime example of the lengths that certain individuals are willing to go to take advantage of the pandemic and the government relief funds it spurred. It's a stark reminder of the need for heightened vigilance and thorough background checks to ensure funds are used properly. Number 7. Josephine Sunshine Overacre Josephine Sunshine Overacre is a wanted domestic terrorist, and a reward of up to $50,000 is available for information leading to her arrest. An age-progressed image of what she might look like now has been released. Overacre was a member of the eco-terrorism cell known as The Family, which operated in the name of groups such as the Animal Liberation Front and the Earth Liberation Front. She was involved in shoplifting equipment and devices used in their arsons, which spanned five states. The Family was behind the Vail Ski Resort arson in Colorado, and it remains the largest eco-related arson in history to this day. Luckily, Gwyneth Paltrow wasn't vacationing there at the time, or she would have sued him for a dollar. You could bet on that. Overacre is fluent in Spanish, and she may be living overseas in Spain. It's believed that she left the U.S. after Operation Backfire, an FBI-led national takedown that led to the arrest of many members of the cell. She's also known to use aliases like Lisa Quintana, China, Joe, and Osha. Overacre has a dark green and almost black tattoo of a bird on her right shoulder and shoulder blades, and a faint mustache. She's vegan and known to have worked as a firefighter, midwife, sheep tender, and masseuse. Investigators are urging anyone with information on Overacre's whereabouts to come forward in order to help bring her to justice. Her alleged crimes have caused over $45 million in damages and put first responders' lives in danger. She's a wanted woman. Number 6. Julianne Baldueza Dimitron. A Hawaiian couple named John and Julianne Dimitrion skipped out on their sentencing in a major mortgage scheme. They'd been scamming Honolulu residents while living a lavish lifestyle, complete with expensive cars and jewelry. Recently, their parents admitted to investigators that the couple had been in contact with them via disposable cell phones and a video calling system similar to Skype. The FBI believes the couple had helped escaping from Hawaii, likely from members of the Sovereign Citizens Movement in Alabama. Just days before their sentencing was scheduled, a charter plane flew them to Utah. From there, they drove to Alabama, but the FBI has no record of them being there after 2011. One of the Dimitrion's victims, Wayane resident Laura Cristo, is frustrated that it's taken so long for the couple to be found. She lost everything because of them, and she can't believe that they still communicate with their parents. The FBI suspects that the violent members of the Sovereign Citizens Movement may have harmed and even killed the couple. The FBI is now actively pursuing new leads, determined to bring the Dimitrion's to justice. They're hoping that the couple's parents can provide more info that'll help them locate the couple and bring them to justice, but for now, they're not talking. Number 5. Sarah Panitsky. The most wanted fraudster in the UK ended up having a Madrid prison after almost 10 years in hiding. During the last decade, she was in search and capture by the order of British authorities, who attribute her a leading role in one of the biggest scams in the country's history. She was sentenced in absentia to eight years in jail. Middle-aged, blonde hair, blue eyes, small frame, and short stature, she almost looks innocent. Crazy that being hella white makes people think you look innocent, but here's the world we live in. The UK accuses her of being the essential piece of a tax fraud that spread across Spain, Dubai, and Andorra, through which over £1 billion were laundered. She fled in 2013 before the trial against her started, and was detained in Catalonia by local police, while walking her dogs. The criminal organization established a complex network of companies that bought VAT-free mobile phones in Europe, and then sold them in the UK at higher prices, including tax. Once the phones were sold, the company disappeared without paying the mandatory fee to HM Revenue and Customs. In the case of Panitsky's group, the network organized a carousel of companies to generate a continuous flow of money, which allowed them to later claim taxes that had never actually been paid, thus robbing the treasury twice. At one point, the group bought and exported more mobile phones in the space of a month than were actually bought or sold in the entire country legally. Number 4. Ashley Swartz 
This Lexington woman managed to become Crime Stoppers Wanted Person of the Week. They were asking for help tracking down 46-year-old Ashley Swartz, who's been an active warrant for a federal supervised release violation. Crime Stoppers will pay up to $1,500 for any info that might lead to her arrest, which can be delivered anonymously. It's as easy as calling the tip line or going online to p3tips.com. No more info about her or her case has been released so far, but if you live in the Lexington area, keep an eye out for this lady. Number 3. Woman Wanted for McDonald's Outburst Her name is Tianis Jones, although you might recognize her better for the crazy tantrum she threw while she was pregnant at a McDonald's. It all took place in Lakeland, Florida, when the pregnant 22-year-old had a disagreement with an employee at a local McDonald's. After becoming increasingly frustrated with the wait time for her order, she proceeded to throw a small plastic sign and several bottles at the employee. Then she walked behind the counter and threw cups on the floor at other employees. Despite attempts from a relative to calm her down, Jones refused to leave the store, calling 911 to make a complaint about the restaurant. It was only after about 10 minutes of arguing that she finally was persuaded to leave. Just before exiting the store, she lifted her skirt to expose her belly and twerked at the employees before finally leaving. Jones was subsequently arrested and charged with burglary and assault, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, and misuse of 911. Damage to the store was estimated to cost about a hundred bucks. She's currently being held in Polk County Jail awaiting her court hearing. Let's hope she likes the jail canteen more than she liked McDonald's. I bet the jail canteen doesn't let you have it your way. Number 2. Alyssa Smith Ah uh, yes, another case of an online deal ending in a very bad deal. It was a robbery in an Omaha neighborhood in plain daylight. And for her crime, she became another Crime Stoppers Most Wanted of the Week. Apparently, she met two people on Facebook, and when they showed up to see her, two guys came out with guns and robbed them. The thing is, Alyssa Smith already served time for a similar crime back in 2012. Guess she didn't learn her lesson. You know the drill. If you see her, please let Crime Stoppers know. You can get a cash reward if she's caught, and you'll remain completely anonymous. Number 1. Michelle Boyd this woman has been charged with the horrendous crime of abandoning a child with risk of bodily injury. An affidavit confirmed it was her daughter, Abigail Boyd. The little girl was found tied to an ice machine with her mouth duct taped shut near a Walgreens location on November 25th of 2016. Michelle Boyd was a nurse working in San Antonio, Texas. She was reported missing and her family even offered a $2,000 reward. She was found two years later at a hospital in Raleigh, North Carolina using an alias. Her family finally admitted that she was exhibiting alarming paranoia behavior before she disappeared. Even though her family is rejoiced to have her back, she's still got to spend her day in court for what she did to her daughter. And the Boyd family has the child's best interest at heart. So, as you can see, it's not just men that can be cunning, dangerous, and elusive criminals. Like the FBI likes to say, there's no gender in crime. What about you? Have you or someone you know ever helped law enforcement capture a fugitive criminal? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.